Namaste, my friends. This is a little introduction to dealing with problems in the joints. Uh, not so much stretching muscles as in conventional yoga exercises, but how to rejuvenate the areas of the joints which deteriorate over time, ideally or technically, statistically, when you're my age, you have a certain amount of arthritic joints. It becomes more difficult to bend this and that. It's not necessary. Understand that your joints have a certain structure to them. They do not have a blood flow or circulation going in and through them, but the fiber and the cells and everything, the liquid, uh, all the liquids, the synovial fluids that are there to help lubricate and actually bring nutrition into the joint, it all needs to be circulated and moving. And your bloodstream needs to have a high oxygen level and good nutrition to be able to supply what is required. So in this photograph, you can see the knee joint and you can see the synovial membrane that's pointed out there. So that is full of fluid and it doesn't have veins and arteries going through it. So it needs to seep in from the area around the joint. And then that's the fluid that brings the nutrients into the cartilage. And the whole joint is kind of enclosed in that kind of a capsule. So circulation inside that capsule is not the same as on the outside. It's slow going. You can heal it by motion, movement, high oxygen levels without pressure. Your muscles have circulation. The blood goes right there and brings food, nutrition, oxygen constantly. Inside the joints, you do not have that. So it's a slower process. So this is going to be a simple exercises to be done, but all of them need to be done with the deep breathing. Oxygen is the key, it's the clue, the required element, and most people are oxygen deficient because the average person only uses 10% of their lungs. In yoga, you learn to use 100% and you use that 100%. It's not just that you learn to take these deep breaths, but you apply it. And you do it for a certain number of hours per day if you want to retard the aging process, if you want to heal something that has already invaded your body like rheumatoid arthritis and these serious considered incurable diseases. It's all curable. Everything can be changed. And yoga provides the flexibility the ability, the techniques to do this. So we start with complete deep breathing. We'll do a few poses and movements, and then I'll do a little description of a joint and explain the parts of the joint. I'll just insert that into the video here so you know a little bit more and you have a visual image of how things are working in all these little joints in your body, of which you have how many? I haven't actually counted them, there's quite a few. Every bone comes to another bone and has a little um, cartilage tissue, synovial fluid and different things to allow it to move. So we start with complete breathing. I have videos on this if you need to learn deep breathing. That's, this one is not about that particularly. But you apply the deep breathing called Mahat Yoga Pranayama. Beginning abdomen, mid, upper, and exhaling, same order, up and out. So observe different angles of how I'm doing this. It goes like a wave. Okay, we have that together. Now we're going to bring this into a lot of different, very flexible body motion. Let's begin with moving 
forwards and backwards. Now we use, I often use and go back to simple techniques, tiger and tigers. Observe my spine here. Again, how many joints are in your spine? 33 vertebrae, all these little cartilage discs in between. They all need to be fed. They need the nutrition. When you're moving this way, there is no pressure on your spine. So it's not the weight of your body sitting on top of the vertebrae, compressing the cartilage disc. Things are more loose and open. So when you are breathing deeply in this position, in this movement, you're getting the possibility of nutrition getting into the joints, going into the cartilage discs, rejuvenating, replenishing their molecular structure as needed, reformatting them, reshaping them. Breathing in here, breathing out here. So these are fundamental healing movements positions. These are called kriyas when there's a motion involved. Then we go into um, same motion but to the sides instead of up and down. So consider your vertebrae sitting like this. We rock it this way, and now we're going to rock it the other way. And then we go into circular motions, which creates a massaging effect all the way around to the cartilage disc. And if it's bulging out or it's deformed, you're going to reformat it, reshape it into a good position by doing this. So consider your spine is, again, the most important thing in your body, the connection between your brain and your body. Without it, everything becomes very dysfunctional. So the side motion, this is called the tiger, by the way, viagra, technically. And then this is the tigress, going side to side. Exhale, in-breath, exhale. So you can do that for a period of time. You're also, in doing this, you're bringing a lot of movement and circulation to all the interior organs. The lymphatic fluid is being circulated around your abdomen. The lungs are empowering the bloodstream and the lymphatic system with higher levels of oxygen while pulling out carbon dioxide and any other toxins and eliminating it. So this is first base, primary. Here you need to practice this until you're feeling good. You can do several minutes of this. Um, and then we go into a variety of other exercises. So let's just do one last one. This one requires a little coordination, a little bit more practice if you haven't done these. We did the tiger up and down. We did the tigress going side to side. That provides quite a bit of motion. Then the two can be put together so that we're going down here in breath, coming up and over to the side, and then going all the way up, arching the spine. Complete exhalation is here, and then you begin the inhalation coming down the other side. In breath, out breath. You can follow along and do this with me if you like. This is just a one-hour flow, again, aimed at arthritic conditions, which can be in any or all of the joints in your body and which can be driven out of those. So then after doing a few rounds, we switch directions and go the opposite way. Down the other side. Inhalation is here, and you're exhaling, coming up the opposite side. In-breath, coming down. And 
It should feel good as you're doing this. You are paying attention to all body sensation. Now we were on our hands and that already has placed a certain amount of pressure and stress on all of the joints in your wrists, from your wrists out to your fingers, the weight here. And your wrists are not really designed to hold the weight of your body. They're designed to be more flexible to do many things. So when you're stressing out by doing something hard, it puts stress on the joints. You might be wearing off some of the cartilage tissue that's in there and that needs to be replaced, rejuvenated with certain proteins, molecules, etc. So we're going to take our hands now and just move them around. I'm opening up my fingers and hands, rotating and then closing them around. You can add any variations you want to this. The idea is flexibility, opening the joints, moving them around while there's no pressure. You're not holding anything, you're simply allowing everything to move and all those little joints are being bent this way, that way and this is what brings a little bit of circulation to the area and the nutrition in that circulation then gets into the joints including the oxygen that we are still bringing in by breathing deeply as we do this. Notice I'm going every which direction. There's no real structure to it. I'm feeling what's going on. I can take my fingers and press them backwards by bringing the hands down like this. And I can feel that kind of pushing the joints all the way into the wrists and fingers as far as they can go this way and that way. And this is an important part of joint rejuvenation in yoga. You're going to the extremes without going into a pain point, just to the extreme of how far it can go. And then you go the other way, you're squeezing in, opening out. I also do this with music and make a dance out of it in some of the other videos like Egyptian flow too. Now I'm going to uh, bend them a little to the extreme by pressing in. So we have bent outwards, opening up, and now we're kind of closing in. I think you can probably hear me breathing and you can feel and hear that I am synchronizing breathing in, breathing out with the motion. Rhythm is another part of rejuvenation of our physical body. Rhythmic breath to motion. This is as far as my wrist wants to go. I went as far the other way when we did this. And then we just did all kinds of uh, finger exercises. Remember, every joint that is moving without stress, without pressure, is more open and that is how we get the circulation of nutrients and oxygen into these places. So from there, bending this way, that way, stretching. You can also put your hands down like this, fingers down by your knees and pushing my um, palms of my hands down. I can feel that stretching all the way into the muscles up in the forearm here. <sighs> Take a few breaths here. <sighs> it is known, of course, in rheumatoid arthritis that hands and fingers get a little stiff and locked up. Many people wake up in the morning and things can hardly move. So I would suggest doing more of these things at night, not sleeping more than six hours. I would actually recommend four hours, two times to make the eight if you need. But when you sleep, 
the stiffening kind of sets in, there's very little circulation. So we're getting circulation back in there, and this is how you reactivate the joints, get the stiffness out, and make them capable of serving you so you can move your hands all over the place. Okay, so we did this one. You can do this, and let's take uh, nine breaths while doing this, holding it. And doing complete deep breathing, Mahat Yoga Pranayama. Keep it in mind that when you're doing the upper section of the breath, mid to upper section, you're getting more motion in here, more circulation. So you're helping to move and pump the lymphatic fluids from the arms back into the system and back into the bloodstream, going through the lymph nodes, which are the checkpoints where your lymphatic fluid is scanned for debris, for broken cell parts, for virus, bacteria, etc. And then there's a whole autoimmune response, which if you're doing all of this yoga exercise, will be working at peak performance. And you don't have to worry about anything. But we cooperate by circulating things and by supplying the oxygen. It's a very necessary thing. It's really simple and it works. So we did our hands down like this. I'm gonna reverse it and put my fingers down the other way and bend my wrists in the other direction. I'm not putting a lot of weight on leaning my body weight on here. I'm just taking it in and feeling how far the wrists can bend and then breathing in. A little bit of motion. Again, motion is more important here for joint rejuvenation. It's movement, mobility, and motion rather than holding a position, which is often done in yoga. Breathing in, breathing out. Okay, I feel it. I bend back the other way a little bit. I have taken my wrist joints to their extremes and now I'm going to shake things out. The shaking is again more movement, a greater flexibility, less limitation. And I go into circulating motions. I bring the fingers into play. flop them back and forth. You're not holding at all, you're just letting them go. You move the arms sides to sides. I'm going out and in. You can go one side or the other. You can add some variations of your own innovation when you're doing this. Back to what we were doing before. Feel what's going on here when you do the shaking. You might feel after doing the stretches that there's a little uh, a little sensation. I wouldn't call it pain, but there's sensation. You can feel something. And in yoga, you don't escape feeling. You feel the process of healing, of rejuvenation, of relaxation, and of action. So, from here, take your hands and hold them up like this. So this is a very good one, and you can feel the amount of vibration, all the shaking really going all through your wrists into your forearms. It's shaking this way, but doing it very fast, like that. And breathing and feeling. back to general shaking and of course when you're turning like this you're getting the joints moving all the way up into the elbows this is more of a hinge joint but there is mobility in here by doing this shaking the fluids are moving circulation is coming to the joints oxygen is seeping into that synovial fluid and replacing rebuilding cartilage whatever is required. 
Okay, so now we go a little further into the shoulders and the elbows. Breathing in and out. In and out. Make up the motions. Just feel that everything is really moving. You're taking your shoulders around in grand circles as far as they can go. Your elbows are turning and twisting. Your hands are still moving around. Your fingers can be opening, closing. Feel the absolute movement of everything when you're doing this. When you first begin, if you already have arthritic conditions, it might be difficult to do this. And you do it anyway. You do it with the oxygen and you watch your mind. What do you believe about your condition? In Western medicine, there are many incurable conditions. In yoga, there are none. So decide which belief system you're going to follow. When you're doing these things, you have the feeling of, I am doing something about it. And you need to understand a little bit about your own chemistry. What does oxygen do, actually? It's part of every little metabolic function in the cells, 50 trillion cells in your body. It's part of the rejuvenation process in the proteins that rebuild the cartilage or synovial fluid or when we're dealing with the spine, there's cerebrospinal fluid in there which also is circulated when we do these motions with the spine. So keep it going as I'm talking. We're doing all this sitting down so far. If you're having problems with this, you can be sitting in a chair or you sit in different positions, change your position whenever it feels like you've been there too long or it's getting tight or stressful. You can sit on little cushions. You can sit on a chair and still be doing these things. So still working with this for another minute arms as far back as they can go, as far up and back, and then coming forward, everything moving without weight, without pressure. Think about when you are holding a lot of weight, um, your body weight is already weight. When you're standing up, there's pressure on the hip joints, on the knees, more on the ankles. Not so much on the hands, unless you're holding something. But under pressure, this healing, rejuvenating aspect of within the, the joints doesn't happen. So you need to take off the weight, relax, stretch out, take a different position. Okay, now I'm bringing my head into it. I'm still moving my arms. I am rotating my head around. Remember, the spine goes all the way up to your head. And the vertebrae in your neck usually have a certain amount of stress because we hold our head in a certain position all day long. So allow that to discharge, let it go, and flexibility in the neck area. Going around. Visualize and imagine what's happening. The vertebrae in your neck are rotating like this. The cartilage discs in between are being massaged and the pressure and release of the massage is bringing circulation throughout those cartilage discs and the blood and the lymphatic fluid around there have a high oxygen content that automatically stimulates rejuvenation. So a few more movements. Now turn your head way over to one side and way over to the other side. I'm also bringing my shoulders. Observe what I'm doing, and you can copy. I'm even moving my shoulders, so I'm getting circulation up in the upper chest. I'm doing the breath all the way up to the upper section. Exhaling, in-breath and out-breath. Turning the whole body, looking around.
back and forth. So we're doing okay with this. We've done the upper body. In my experiences with yoga, uh, dealing with people who have uh, spinal problems, hip problems uh, in the hands and shoulders, it's more effective to do these things several times a day. You can just stop and you know, shake out your wrist, especially if you're working on your laptop or whatever. There's a certain amount of stress and tension that builds up in the muscles around. The circulation into the joints within the wrist is inhibited. So stop, shake out your hands. Bend them backwards. You do this all the time. So just throw some of these in. Feel your body and you'll notice your body will say, oh, I'm starting to feel a bit tight in here. So then you bring shoulder rolls in and rotation of the head and neck, arms and hands. This is the part that we use in our modern day working, right? We're sitting there holding ourselves in this position, looking one way. So loosen up, look around, do different things. Take the breathing in deeper. Let's throw in cleansing breath which is known to eliminate high levels of carbon dioxide, which is a toxic substance. It is our exhaust fumes, like what comes out of your exhaust on your vehicle. So the cleansing breath can also be thrown in at various times. You um, bring it in as you do a few exercises or maybe between as you're going from one exercise to the other a very simplified form of the cleansing breath is simply that complete in breath and you slouch forward blast out the slouching compresses the lungs and helps push everything out and then do more deeper breathing now let's come up to a standing position, but before we do that, back to the tiger and tigress, and just see when we were doing this originally, you're getting a lot of movement in here, right, in these joints, and again, you don't have a lot of the normal pressure as when you're sitting up or when you're standing, so the joint is more open, and you can move things around, so feel this out, if you feel discomfort, um, something going into uncomfortable towards pain, there may already be a problem developing. So by doing this with the breathing, with good nutrition, you can change, reverse the problem. If you have created a problem in your physical body, you can uncreate that problem. So we're going to come up now to simple standing positions and coming down here, I'm just moving around. Look at my knees going around in circles. There is pressure on my knees in this case. My body weight is on my knees and on my ankles, but I'm getting rotation. So we're going to complement this by going back down to the floor and do more motions, more movements without the weight. So we're activating the joints, getting some circulation within circulation of the synovial fluid, which moves around every time you move. But as I said, when there is the weight and the pressure, you're not getting the input of the nutrition or the oxygen into those fluids. So we're activating by doing this. And again, you can be doing 
a variety of other kind of motions. Keep it flowing and flexible and see where your body stops you. And does that feel painful or does it just feel like resistance, doesn't want to go any further? So these are actually classical exercises that are done in Tai Chi and Qigong. So to take it to a further um, degree of rejuvenation, we go back down. And now we're going to lie down. This is not difficult. <laughs> Honest. So in this position, I'm going to bring my legs up. So now the weight of my body is not on the knees. It's not on my ankles. It's not on my hips. There's very little weight on my hips compared to normal. So I'm going to do exercises of simply moving and I am still breathing. If you already have a problem here, it said you go very easy and gently to whatever your body limitations are. But eventually you can go further with this. And in yoga, it is gradually increasing the flexibility, gradually increasing the mobility of every joint if it starts to feel very unpleasant towards the pain side of life, back off. Do more of the easier stuff. So here we can go into bigger circles. You can open out and feel what's happening in your pelvic joints here. Where the femur bone, it's a ball and socket joint that is capable of going in all directions. If there are limitations, if there is damaged cartilage tissue in there or too much calcium on the bone itself, it can start to feel a little rough. So you work that out. Circulation, oxygen, now look at my feet. I'm going to go into bicycling type of motion. So I'm working my knees without any weight on my knees. So the knee joint itself, and I'll show you an image of this and explain the parts. And then I'm going a little bit to the sides, just allowing the motion to go all over the place. My ankles are being rotated and moved. My toes are opening like we did with the fingers and the hands. If you're doing this um, consistently, periodically, and every day is of course better, but every few days is enough to retard and completely stop this condition they call arthritis, the stiffness that sets in with aging. Again, it does not need to happen. It happens because we're not bending or we're only bending one way and we don't bend back the opposite way. So the body needs motion in all directions. So back to the bicycling and going off to the sides. I can bring my arms into it. All kinds. And then I can rock back and forth a little bit. So no limitations, no restrictions. You can invent 
soft emotions. You can bend in a way that you haven't before. You can go side to side like this. Feeling, again, this is going back up into the pelvic region, into the spine itself. If you are already practicing some degree of yoga and are okay with these things, there's a little superior position called Viparita Karani where you can lift the legs up, support the pelvis here, and continue with these motions. Breathing is deep again. This is also very good for helping the whole cardiovascular system which is what's delivering the nutrition, the oxygen, and eliminating the carbon dioxide. So don't be afraid of spending a little extra time doing these things. How many hours of the day do you spend up on your feet, working at your jobs, or even walking long distances or going hiking? That gives a certain amount of exercise to muscles and joints, but does not supply the rejuvenation to those joints, nor to the muscles, in fact. The complete deep breathing does. So, spend as much time as you like doing that. We've covered most joints everywhere in the body. We finish with Simply coming back to an easy sitting position and breathing deeply. Here, a little contemplation. Check your mind. What do you believe about your condition? What do you believe about the stiffness? Do you understand how the body works? It has a constant rejuvenating force that will be there functioning all the time until we inhibit it, until we pollute it with the wrong foods, with drugs, particularly pharmaceutical drugs that tend to destroy our system and inhibit the autoimmune system, which already does what the pharmacy is trying to do anyway. So, I'll leave you at that. You can continue breathing deep, look at your life, and see how often during the day you do any deep breathing at all. And see how much you forget to breathe deep. Oxygen is in constant demand. And when we're not breathing deeply, we go into oxygen deficit. So some of the cells in your body are kind of in suffocating mode. And you start to feel that as stress and tension. And, okay, I need to quit working now. Can I go home? So, maybe you're working at home now. So you have more time to do these things, take a break every so often, and rejuvenate. Take five minutes and do these motions. Go back to work. It's amazingly helpful. And if you do this periodically for a while, you'll find the aging process doesn't hit you like it's supposed to according to statistics. So, just as a final note, I am 72 years old. I have no arthritic problems. I have no health problems whatsoever. An autoimmune system that is peak performance. The rain is coming down and getting louder. I'll stop here. Have a great life.